here's a preview of this episode. Uh, this is gonna be a short one today. We've got a 50 minute drive. Okay. Um, I'd freak myself out. I don't know why, like who, why is this future me talking to myself? <laughs> It's, and I hadn't like, I, think. I really hadn't, when I when I hosted, I hadn't really like mentally prepared myself. So the guy was like, hey, give it up for your host, supposed to give. And if you say anything other than that, people might look at you weird. So it's, they never want, like, how's the pregnancy going? They never want to hear, well. And now this episode. Oh, oh there we go. We're rolling now. Yeah. All right, we got Patrick Scott here. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Patrick? Doing good. Terrific. We got a, this is going to be a short one today. We got a 50 minute drive, uh, 41 miles. We're going to Pearl Street in Boulder for a mic I've never been to. You've never been to, right? I'm a little worried about it. A little worried. All right. That's some, that's good. You should be worried. No, I mean, it's just like no one's going to be there. Oh, no. BK's running it. BK, that's a fun name. Yeah. Sherrod, I think. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I've never been. Have you ever done comedy in Boulder? Yeah, there used to be a really good one, a good open mic at Johnny's Cigar Bar. Okay. And that was a really bummer when that got closed down because that one was, you could go and have like, I don't know, I think open mics suck when you uh, you can't get a read on your jokes, like there's not enough people there right. to like actually tell if something's funny or not. Yeah. And Johnny's was always a good place to, you, you, you could just go off, you know, you could get a lot. You could know if your jokes were funny, and then also just, it was really fun. Nice. It was really good. So it was yeah. worth the drive? Yeah, all the time. Nice. And it, How long ago was it? How long have you been doing comedy? Six years. Six years? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, the record. I know. Well, that's not a good thing, right? I mean, no, like, I think that's, well, I, sh I don't know. Who, how, how long are the other people? Who else have you done? Uh, We've had, well, I don't know what order I'm going to do these in, so yeah. I tend to not to talk about the oh, previous darn. guests. Sorry, I'll tell you off camera later. Right. Um, but less time. Le less time. I don't think anybody that I've done so far has. Uh, I feel like you should start lying years. about it. Like, no, women lie about their age. Well, it's funny, like, I'm at the stage where I want to lie upward. Yeah, you know? I feel bad. I want to lie down. I'm, I'm like a year and a half in. But I, yeah, I guess I can see that. Who started around the time as you that has. I was thinking maybe about had that. had some success. Oh, oh, me and Zach Moss started about the same time. Oh, okay. He's been doing it six years. Yeah, and it's like one of those things where it's like, you never want to compare yourself to his people. But uh, yeah, we started about the same time, but he was just, he was just way funnier. Huh. Was, From the beginning. Yeah, and like, I think you get a sense of people too, where it's like, oh, they're like, like some people are funny, but some people fill and act and like, you can see them becoming comedians. Huh. Rather than, and you, you could always get like a sense of him being just kind of, I don't know, really good at it. Huh. Yeah. That's funny, because I think of you as being really good at it. Like, I really, and I, your comedy, your, like, topics tend to speak to me. A little oh, yeah. nerdy or a little, uh, I don't know, not, like, wild Tinder stories or... No, I'm so glad I don't, or, I've never had to do dating apps, because then I would have Tinder jokes. <laughs> And that's like, I don't know, everyone that, has That's them. the number one reason not to not to date on the apps is because you don't have the jokes. You are just, you're at least having a, a new take, man. I've heard a million Tinder yeah. jokes. I've never been. The worst. I mean, it's not like you can't do them. It's just like, I've never heard one, a new one that's blown me away yet. Right. Where I'm like, oh, what an interesting take. Or yeah. I've never thought of that angle. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I think that and I don't, I never want to talk about eating ass again. Because I feel like that's hacky now. Like, everyone just says, blah, 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 eating ass. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, it's just it's just the act of eating ass is now what we're laughing at and not, I don't know. I, a, I'm trying to figure out not to, what's hacky and not do it all. Yeah. I did do an episode that may or may not have been seen yet with another comic who was going to do eating ass material. Yeah. And we were like 34th and 35th at an open mic. Uh -huh. And when it got to like the 32nd person, he leaned over to me and he said, Hey, there hasn't been any eating ass material yet. <laughs> so he was real happy that. That's such a hilarious sentence. <laughs> like, or just like a yeah, weird. He was celebrating <laughs> that nobody had been talking about eating ass. <laughs> but it's almost, it's it's like, uh, it's not shocking anymore. Right. Uh, so, I, and I don't know how many people are actually eating ass too. Right. Like I know I can't, like I sometimes I feel weird using sex references that I'm just using because I've heard them before. Right. I, you know, like I remember I have a thing about touching a butthole. I've never done any like butthole stuff. And I was doing the joke and like Zach Welch came and corrected me on like, no, you can't <laughs> fucking do that. Or something. Yeah, I think I was like, <laughs> yeah, I think I was like 
it was more about going into the asshole, but sometimes I think it's just like better just to like hover on, rub it and stuff. And Zach was like, it's clear you've never done butt stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and like most of the shit that like a lot of new comics talk about, like cocaine use and all these things are just like tropes from other comedians that they have no idea. It's just like, huh, they're, no they're, personal experience. they're just playing the role of comedian. I think that's what is like the biggest thing that, bo- that you could tell when somebody's new is they're like, they're playing the role of a comedian, not like just being themselves. Got it. Like, you'll see so many guys talk about how small their penis is. And it's just because they've heard a bunch of times, you gotta be honest and be vulnerable yeah. when you do stand-up. And it's like, yeah, but you just can't tell me your dick's small. Like, you can't just, like, say something vulnerable. It has to be funny or, like, have a purpose or be surprising or something. But and I, just, I don't know. People don't care about your tiny dick either. Right. Unless it's funny, I guess. So how long did it... Like, what was it like in the... I have so many questions for you. Six years ago, what was Denver's open mic? Were you in Denver six years yeah. ago? Okay, so you've been here the whole time. I bet you've seen a lot of open mics come and go. Oh, yeah. And, like, Scruffy's come and go, like, several times. Huh. Like, I think I'm probably... Because my first set was ever at... Was ever... First set I ever did was at Scruffy's. Oh, nice. And Who I was th- the host way back then? I don't even know. It was okay. one of those things where it was somebody who I assumed was like really good and really great high level comedian uh-huh. but now looking back they were probably like a newbie who was just hosting a mic and cause I remember and so not, but so they're long gone but uh, there's been like five iterations of Scruffy since then yeah. like where it's come and gone and I think well, how it is now is actually probably one of the better ones with you, Derek running it do you, yeah he's crushing it yeah that's do good you, do you remember uh, anything else about your first open mic? Were there people there? Like, that's kind of a rough mic. I but remember... Derek's doing a good job with it now. I remember Aaron Uris being there. Oh, I, really? Yeah, because I had been, uh, I think for a few months before that. I think it was my my New Year's resolution to do stand-up, and I don't think I got to actually do it until, like, April, maybe. Okay. And I was just going and watching shows before then. Okay. And so I knew Aaron was very funny, and I was kind of... He was watching me. I remember him watching me. And, uh... God, what was the fucking thing? What it was it? I'm trying to figure out what it was. Like your bit? That you yes, did? and it makes me sad that I can't remember because I almost try and like go over it several times a year or like every once in a while so I could remember it. But like, what was the first thing? Well, so something I had some bit that was probably like a, a dick joke, and then I forgot what I was gonna say after that. <laughs> And I, was, I just like froze and didn't remember anything. And then some woman yelled out, your roommate having sex. And I was like, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. And then I kind of, <laughs> it went pretty well after that. Uh, I think it's still a decent joke. I think it was, my roommate has loud sex. But the problem is I've gotten used to it. So now I can't go to sleep without the sound of balls slapping against ass. Oh, I've heard you tell that joke. And if, but then there was a tag and it's like, and if he goes out of town, I have to put I have to put uh, put you porn on shuffle just so I get a good night's sleep, huh. and that was like the first joke. Yeah, that's not bad. And, and you that, still use it? Yeah, that's actually crazy. Yeah. That there's parts of that. Well, it turned into the white noise machine because now it's not my roommate has sex. It's it was it turned into a white noise machine. Mm-hmm. It was like because the way it is now, it's like uh, God. No, it, it's very similar. Yeah, which it's is crazy. Similar. That's great. Which is crazy. Um, how do you how do you feel about your first set? It went well. Because I remember a lot of people, since it was close to Comedy Works, a lot of people I'd recognized from Comedy Works had come there. Okay. And I was really excited to see uh, Troy Walker and Kevin O'Brien. Oh, that's crazy. And a few people who were around at that time to come over. And so yeah. I, then I, I remember running back to my car super excited and putting change in the, the meter so I could come back and watch all these people. Because it was really good. It must have been really good that night. Because I remember Troy and Kevin just being very very good and entertaining and yeah. just the room being really great now what six years ago was comedy as popular were there like long waits to perform or uh, it was similar i think okay. there's more people now but it wasn't uh it wasn't like there was nobody but it was a there's a little bit more people now but it was it's weird, I guess I haven't talked about it. It's like, yeah, to think back on that a little bit. I mean, because that's just wild to me to think. My first mic, I went up after like 40 other comics, and there was barely any. I was like third to last, and yeah. almost nobody was there. Well, like, there would be nobody. Uh, it was uh, Irish Rover. Uh, and there would be nobody, like, I don't know who Troy Walker's equivalent would be today. Like, if Al Jackson had dropped in, yeah. he would have certainly gone up way in the beginning. Yeah, um, and he shows up there every once in a while. You know, yeah. Uh, or you, 
like you would be one of the very funny people, but you would have gone up hours, literally hours before I got up. <laughs> there is nobody, like at the time I didn't even know anybody, yeah. so it didn't matter, but I mean even today. That Bob, bothers me though, when like new people don't, like, like, I don't know, like people don't go by the list order and like people who are new or stuff uh, or whatever go later. Yeah. I really, that bothers me so much because you're like I'm the new guy, people. so it definitely bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. And I get fucked by it, too, because so many people are like, you know, put up their friends first. And I'm not necessarily, uh, I don't think anybody hates me, but I'm not everyone, anyone's best friend. Right. So I, that often screws me, too. So I'm like, that kind of, and it bothers me. Uh, but I think new comics are well willing to get beat on a well, little bit. Well, yeah, and I, I, I'm not really at that place anymore. But a year ago, I actually, I got an awful lot out of watching two hours of open mic comedy didn't matter how bad it was yeah. like you can get a lot out of watching other comedians now i feel like i've seen 300 <laughs> denver open mic comedians multiple times yeah and i kind of get it uh, totally like I, every once in a while i'll get something out of somebody's set or yeah. be be interested by how somebody's doing something mm -hmm. but it's not it's not as rich as it used to be like i used to get like a lot out of just sitting there for hours yeah. Now it's a little bit, it's kind of tedious. You should just go to, I know, I don't, I've never done this very much, but like go watch shows at the back of Comedy Works. Yeah, I do that a lot. Back I love Brothers it. That's going to be the best thing you yeah. can do. Because I, I have only done that a few times, but I need to do it more. Which It's is, great. Yeah. It's really stunning to see, you know, professionals versus open mic comics. It's a big yeah. difference. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're so hilarious especially the national tours yeah like you, you know you can see the local guys who are terrific uh who get to go up every once in a while but the, the guys coming across the country uh they're unbelievable joke writers like, and, who, who blew you away um two people uh let's hope i can remember their names and you just do you just show up or do you call ahead yeah, uh, I used to call ahead. Now I don't call ahead anymore because I kind of know all the employees. People get, yeah, they they know my to. face. Yeah. And I'm just like, and I'm cool about it. I'm like, look, if there's any room for me, can I sneak in the back? And I'll, honestly, I'll only say that on like a Friday or Saturday night with a big name. If it's like Wednesday, uh -huh. like I just go downstairs. Yeah. Like nobody cares. And, and I'll walk in and the, the showroom's like half full. I mean, I'm not rude about it, or, or yeah. I don't have a chip on my shoulder. But yeah, but there's no it's just, reason to worry about it. You yeah, just gotta do it. Yeah, exactly. Because I, uh, I need to build that into my. When somebody comes into town, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. you should definitely go on Thursday. Yeah. Because that's like the polite thing to do. I'm thinking um, about doing that. Who, who are the guys? So, did you ever see that Seinfeld documentary that's called Orny the Adams? Canadian? Yes, that guy, Orny Adams. So good. He has a bad reputation. Just the, from that movie. Yeah, just from that. He was. Terrific, maybe yeah. the best comedian I've ever seen live. Like his crowd on the Thursday night show, I saw him yeah. twice, uh, which was interesting seeing him twice. Uh, but the first night, he did so much crowd work, like worked into his bits, yeah. that it was just like a magic trick. The way he was so present with the people in those first couple of rows and kept doing callbacks to people who were at the kind of like how Sam Talent yeah. does his stuff. Uh, it was he was amazing. He got a standing ovation. Oh, I, I've really? almost never seen that. I saw Aziz Ansari. He got a standing ovation. But like famous people get standing ovations. Yeah, He's, sometimes standing ovations are like I go to like musicals and they always get a standing ovation. Yeah. And I'm like, why? I, I think at comedy, it's it's a new at comedy works. It's, it's very unusual. unusual. It was a Thursday night. Not everybody. It was like half the crowd stood up at the end. But he was just so high energy for over sixty minutes. That's dope. It, it was awesome. And the other guy was an alliteration name who I'd never heard of, but he's been on David Letterman like 25 or 75 times. He's the most ever uh, times. I feel bad that I can't remember his name he's, now. He said the tall, alliteration? Yeah, it's just like tall white guy? Steve Smith. Yeah, yeah, tall white guy. I can't. Uh, shoot, I can't remember his name. I'll, when we uh, record on the way back, I'll have to look up okay. his name. Tom Papa? Uh, no, mm -hmm. no, it's, a, it's the same letter. Both. Okay. First name and last name. But he did well. But he was, you know, I walk in and I'm like, oh, this guy's going to be boring. He's old and tall and white, which is ironic because I'm old and tall and white. Yeah. Uh, so I'm you. immediately judging him. So and hilarious. he was hilarious. I'm like losing it. And I, at that point, I was kind of in like a, a funk with comedy. I was like, I can't, nobody can make me laugh anymore. Like I figured out the joke structures and I'm guessing all the punchlines. Yeah. And I went and saw, just randomly, I had no, I didn't even know who was performing. 
and I, it was at the South Club. I asked if I could sit in and uh, went upstairs in the balcony all by myself and watched. And I was just losing it almost the whole time. And it was like 45 minutes in when I realized everything he'd been doing was clean, uh, which is even more impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to write clean now, and it's it's more difficult. Yeah. For sure, because it's easy just to have your like exit valve of like let's do take it dirty. Yeah, and it's it's a better exercise for me to try and uh, not be dirty. Because I was I was on some show where like the first person was filthy and the second person was filthy and then I was the third person and I had like this these jokes I really liked but some of them were dirty ish and it just made me hate everything about my material. Yeah. Like ugh, I can't be flexible enough or capable enough to be clean or like mm -hmm. not. Cause it's oppressive when you when you just get a bunch of dirty comics after one another. It's like, yeah. god damn it, can somebody talk about egos or something? It's right. Like, <laughs> like all this crazy sex shit. So I've been trying my best to actually write clean. And I've watched like Jim Gaffigan specials going like, how the fuck does somebody do this? Yeah, he's amazing. Oh, so yeah. along those lines, like if, if you could time travel back to right before your very first open mic, yeah. six years ago, what would you, what, you like to tell yourself that would be the most impactful. <laughs> Does it have to be about comedy specifically? Yeah, well, well, you can throw in some non-comedy stuff. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be an interesting take. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't think I could tell myself anything. I don't think you can tell anybody something. They have to learn it. I don't Just know. Keep doing it. I don't know what the fuck I would tell myself. Okay. I'd yeah. freak myself out. I don't know why. Like, who, why is this future me talking to myself? <laughs> what the fuck? Would I, what would I tell myself? Might you tell yourself to try and do more clean stuff? Or do you uh, think that's too hard and that would just sandbag any No, because I don't think this clean shit's going to work out. Like, I, my, my <laughs> brain just always goes... Like, my shit's not, like, super dirty. No. But it's not, like, a holiday clean at comics. Right. So I don't, I don't think I have any stuff where the punchline is uh, butthole, you know, like, where it's just the sake of dirtiness. It's funny. Right. I have, like, different takes on dirty topics. Um, but I just feel like that's kind of how I am. And I, but I think it's worth trying to write myself, you know, give myself the challenge of being clean. But if I, if I think like with a lot of comedy, I'm always just, I think you're just always trying to be more yourself. And myself is kind of saying inappropriate things when I'm not supposed to. Okay. Um, and so that's what I'm, I feel like is more my voice than all this shit. And I just don't, I hate, I don't know, when you have to like, go deep like so like Jim Gaffigan's amazing because he'll do it like a Hot Pocket thing and he has all these fucking observations about Hot Pockets and I, I get annoyed at some point when I'm thinking about it, like okay shit, who gives a fuck about Hot Pockets anymore but right. I, I, I just don't want to go that deep on minutia right like I'm really interested in like big swings or like interesting angles but not necessarily like I don't know taking one topic and getting uh, all the juice out of it yeah, that's hard. I don't know. I don't know if that made sense, but I don't think I could tell myself anything. Okay. I, you know what? I would, here's oh, I thought of a good one. Okay. Make more friends. Oh, okay. I think the worst thing I've ever done is I, I just have like a loner mentality, and it's not served me in any way ever in my life, especially in comedy. Huh. So I would tell myself to yeah, be, be more social. Be more social, and huh. like if you think if I don't know what in my head holds me back with that stuff but there's way dumber way more offensive like I I'm not that bad to talk to right, right? but there's some people you get an open mic you get cornered by and you're like oh shit <laughs> and so I now I know those people exist I'm like okay I'm not I'm not that bad and I and I've actually been working to, to uh, get better at like putting myself out there even though it's not my nature but I would definitely because I missed out on so much with that huh. because you also learn so much from other people yeah like if you're just doing it in a in a bubble or like in a not in a bubble but in like a silo by yourself you're missing out on a lot of input from other people or influence from other people because you get you get a little bit from other comics when you watch them do their do their set but if you hang out with them nine times out of ten you'll realize that they're not adequately turning how funny they are into funny on stage like they're so huh. when you talk comics are just weird like it's just nice to hear weird perspectives on the world and some of these comics aren't bringing this up in their stand-up but if you talk to them they'll go like oh shit like this is interesting perspective and I've really enjoyed kind of fostering relationships with comics and I 
uh, that's like a new thing that I'm doing. Huh. And I, yeah, and especially over six years, that would have compounded. And you'd have people all over the country at this point. Yeah, networking is well. big. Huh. You need to do it, and it's yeah, not even. That's a great. There's Nobody like a, said that. That's a great. Yeah, and it's lesson. not even like a cynical thing. Like I, it's not like a thing where it's like you got to meet no, these it's people fun. and get in them. Yeah, you just have to. The life's about being a part anything. of groups and be like humans love community, and you need to find even within comedy. There's like, you can find your little people, mm-hmm. right? And you can get energy, creative energy through them. And, and I think it's really important to do it. Huh. And if you don't do that, you're gonna miss out on opportunities like people aren't going to put you on shows just because they're going to put on the people that they like before you right and also just the more people you expose yourself to as a comedian in different ways of thinking it's going to do you so much good because there's so many weirdos that do open mics and some of them aren't good comedians but they are mostly all interesting to at least have a conversation with yeah and you can take so much from it yeah for good and for bad yeah I've, like even not talking to people I've just seeing how people carry themselves I've learned a lot from comedians and like what not to do in life and <laughs> like there's a guy named Vic G who was he was terrible I think he ended up actually doing terrible things he wasn't just like a jerk and a drunk but uh, he always I would just watch him perform and he would just go up there drunk and yell and ramble and he'd always just mistakenly stumble on something really funny and creative and unique but he was too drunk and too haphazard to actually like realize what he had done and like capture it and that always bothered me with him and I you know there's so much worse that he did um, than not being able to foster his creativity properly but that I think about him a lot because he was there's so many people who just don't do the work to uh, to, to actually like turn their funny into something that they could replicate right. and be consistent with yeah I see that all the time. It's actually, the one thing I like about it is I've seen people get, like, a lot better. I think that's one of my favorite things about going to open mics. Is seeing people who have started, and they're like... Like, I remember when I started, Steve Vanderplug was the guy who got up, and you were like, fuck, this guy at the open mic. <laughs> like, it was just like, this is terrible. It was like, it was the worst. And now, he's very, very good. Yeah. And, like, impressively so. And so... I, that's, that's that kind of blows my mind that you could if you just work really hard no matter who you are I think you're going to get funnier right like I don't eh there are surely exceptions but mostly if you work really if hard you put in the work yeah and it, it, it's to different degrees like some people are just going to be funnier than others but you will definitely get better at it if you're even if you're just like I've seen people just go up and do the same jokes all the time and not necessarily write and they still get better yeah they're, they're not getting as good as they could but uh, that's okay well I mean for me like I'm just better in a sense that I don't totally forget what I'm doing on stage anymore because I'm so yeah. terrified yeah. like just being able to remember whether my material is good or not just the fact that I can deliver it is an improvement I so, remember that or it was just I just didn't have any control, you know? I just remember early on just not having any, I don't know, like, you just, it was like a blur, it was like a car crash, yeah. where you could kind of remember bits and pieces, but you're just kind of, you're just kind of scared to death. Yeah, I call it blacking out. <laughs> like, it's not like you're drunk blacking out, but you yeah. know, you're unconscious in the sense that your memory is not, like, somebody paused the recorder yeah. while you're on stage, yeah. and you get off, and... Like, now, I'm so proud that I can, like, remember people in the audience <laughs> and whether they laughed at certain jokes. And, totally. You know, somebody spilled a drink or whatever. In the beginning, there was no way I was picking up on any of that stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. like my brain was 100% <laughs> focused on just not, like, crapping my pants. And <laughs> I remember that, too. I really remember being at Comedy Works and just, I just remember my head, I remember, like, my head shifting back and forth and I'm not focusing on anything. <laughs> it's just, like, a blur and I'm like, I didn't know what I was doing and you're just so scared I guess yeah it's, it's stage fright basically I guess yeah we're just like yeah I guess I can do it stage it's fright. a form of stage fright for sure but you do it I mean like I do uh, what are they called like meetup groups for my I do like web design stuff okay and I'll do meetups and that the say a little bit, bit about yourself thing I go black then yeah I'm like shit and I'll I, st- I just start stammering and stuttering and so it, it I, it happens to me now, but not in comedy. It happens to win. Like I do, like mingly job things. Professional. Yeah. yeah. Which is weird. I always, always, 
little bit in the back of my head says, oh, you can you talk in front of people a lot. I'm sure it's very similar to comedy in that the more practice you get at it, the more comfortable. Oh, you totally. Know. I can't think. Most things are probably that way. Yeah. It actually took me a long time to figure that out. So speaking of things you're brand new at, I haven't seen you at many open mics recently, yeah. and I have a suspicion there's a reason for that. <laughs> you want to share what yeah. that might be? Yeah, inside a baby. Yay, baby! Yeah, so, and that's been... And I'm not on the Facebook, so I don't basically know nothing about it except you did send me a picture. Yeah. Adorable. Oh, did I? Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been able to get out as much, which is which is interesting. So I'll probably, but I've been been able to get out a couple times a week, which is pretty nice. Oh, really? What mics are you going to? Bike Cafe or Tanda? On Sundays. I almost never go out on Sundays. That one's oh. decent. I mean, yeah, I if usually, you go up late, that's one you're probably going to get fucked. Yeah, but if you I, go up early, it might be good. And I never go up early. I'm not popular. Really. Yeah, and Zach will definitely put up, will put up people he likes before. Yeah. And he'll say that openly. Yeah. Um, and then Voodoo. Those are the main two. Because okay. those are the ones yeah, that I don't I'm go to comfortable voodoo. with. It's funny. I don't go to Voodoo either. Because yeah. similar problem. Like, I won't get up. I won't yeah. get into that first 20. Or the, the last time I went, the time got cut down to two minutes, and I went up around midnight, and there was like nobody left. Yeah, that's a rough one. And, you know, that just happens a couple times. I'm just like, eh. But I do love, Voodoo is fun. It's one of the best mics if you yeah. can get up early, because there's yeah. a real audience there. Totally, and it's good. You can definitely and, get up. And the other comedians are all very good. Like, it's an enjoyable show for you. Yeah. Yeah, because I think watch. people know what's up. Like, they're they're going there because they could actually get a, a, a read on jokes. Yeah, they're trying to do good material. Uh, I think those mostly. Okay, that's why I never Stoney's see you. Ones. Um, yeah. And I've been going to uh, all the new faces that I can, so yeah. that's another reason I miss Voodoo, because that I'm too late for the sign up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. Well, definitely, so I'm going to have to have my, my schedule nailed down very tight about where and what, what mics I go to and stuff. And I think I'm gonna have to make sure that I go to New Fa uh, New Talent on Tuesdays. Uh, I always get New Talent, New Faces mixed up. Yeah. But uh, how's it been you going? Mean just for like the hang, or because uh, because I, I I need to be since I have so little like I uh, little time to give to it now yeah. to like doing jokes and being a comedian I need to be very focused with my goals yeah. and then my goal would just be to start climbing the ladder a little bit of comedy work okay and that if I sense. need to do that I need to be there all the time yeah sure. and uh, so I think that would be good just to have that specific goal yep. and whatever else is tertiary that doesn't mean as much but I'm gonna do stuff i put all my concentration into that okay. so, so I think that's what are you a C or a B I don't know the difference. Do you do three or four minutes four. Of, of four as you're being? Yeah, you yeah. get up a lot more frequently. I think I should. Great. And I definitely want to be MC. I know I could do it. And so, but I think that's just a matter of being the person they think of when they're putting, making the list that night. Yeah. And so you just got to show up all the time. And then also, I think I've also, that's another thing about the clean stuff, is uh, you need to be able to do clean if you're going to host. Yeah. I think they're specifically, I don't know if they're specifically looking, but it doesn't, if they know that you can be clean, then they, they could trust you to host. And like, if you're too, you don't want to be a too dirty host, because then that sets a weird tone yeah. for the whole fucking show. Yeah. So you have to. And it kind of ruins the shock value of yes, comedians it's, coming after you. It's not what you want. So I think right. that's that's helped me back there, is my my blueness. That's cool. And so, so who hosts, who has hosted Vander Blue hosts yeah. that was like around way back when? Yeah. So many people quit that I've even forgotten who they are. <laughs> that's what's kind of sad about it. It's like you you don't even have a high school yearbook of all yeah, these people. Yeah, that's wild. Every once in a while I'll see somebody that I haven't seen in like two months. I'll be like, oh, they didn't quit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's one guy I never forget. He used to always go to Three Kings. Three Kings and he would always be high on acid and would do the craziest sets. And I was always... Not Little Aspie. What's that? Not Little Aspie. No. Okay. His name was Colin Biddy. And he was, at some points, I thought he was going to pull out a gun and shoot us all the way he was talking. But I just remember him very, uh, so much. And I, but there's so many people, there's some guy who looked like Tim Tebow. That's all I remember about him. It's like, that, oh, that guy who looked like Tim Tebow. Uh, but yeah, there's just like sh shapes of people I remember. Or wow. general police descriptions. Which makes me kind of sad. Yeah. Because it was, it was part of it. But then also, a lot of it's, a lot of it's the same. Yeah. Like, I remember... Jody Champion was still coming around to Mike's 
when I started, but she was already too good for it. Huh. And she would always just come and shit on the fact that no one was listening or uh, all in like, yeah, it's a fucking open mic. Well, yeah. Like Kevin O'Brien was notorious for that too, of just coming and shitting on the mic and open mic comedians and like, you just ruined the energy in this room, dude. Right. And you also, you were doing the same jokes we've all heard. So what do you want us to do? Yeah. Uh, this is just like little things that I remember huh. from the beginning. Well, that's a good lesson too, to, you know, once you're a little more senior in the open mic scene, there's no reason to not be nice to other people. No, especially because we're all lowly pieces of crap. Like, I don't know, like... Yeah, in the yeah, universe like, of comedy. Overall. Yeah, if you're, if you're getting, even if you're like hosting or getting guest spots at Comedy Works, you're still kind of working for free there. Like, they don't yeah. pay those people a lot of money. Yeah. So they're all still kind of low-level comedians. Yeah. I mean, I know I know it feels good to feel superior to other people, and they are, frankly, a little bit. They're a little better than just somebody who's starting out, but not really. Not from the perspective of Jerry Seinfeld. Right. For, yeah. From that perspective, we're all very, you know, open micers or open mic adjacent yeah. kind of people. So I, don't, I, don't, I never like when people are too good. Or like when people go up that are pretty, you know, have made some progress in a comedy career, go up and don't try at all because they're like too good for it or something. Huh. I'm like, that's annoying. Like you can't, you can't try to make us laugh. Like you have to like communicate to us that you're too good for this. Huh. You mean at an open mic? Yeah. Okay. Like I, I see that happening. It just kind of bothers me. Because I've seen people who are national headliner people come to smaller shows and open mics and actually do the job of an open mic where it's like, here's some new jokes, let me try this out. Yeah. And I'm going to try and make them work. Yeah. And any reason, any, it's just stupid to not, to not do that. Then you're just wasting your time. Yeah. To, unless you're like, have some, uh, some process where you have to do these jokes at zero energy at the beginning because you're, you have to make sure they work at zero energy. Then you bring them, you know, like some weird process like that. But maybe then that that's okay. But I just see a lot of people who just think they're too good for it, and maybe they are. You know, because once you go to open mics for a very long time, it does get very depressing. Going like, oh, I'm still here. And right. So I'm still here. And that, that could be something hard to get over. And I've, I've like dealt with that a little bit, but I just like doing it. So I, I get over the depression of I haven't like achieved anything because I still actually am having a lot of fun uh, going to these open mics and writing jokes and, and I'm still getting better. I know if I actually put in more work of trying to go, you know, do more road gigs or something that I can, I'd get better quicker, but I, it's just not how my wife's, my, uh, my life is priori prioritized. Yeah. So I'd have to do what with what I can with the open mics. What are some of your highlights over the last six years? Like cool things you've done in comedy that mm. you're proud of, but would probably never mention if I didn't ask you explicitly. Oh, not a lot. Um, we did. My friend Weston Unruh was a comic who quit, but he put a bunch like a, a run of shows together in Kansas, okay. and it was him. Me, Cody Spiker, and Mitch Jones, and we were just kind of driving around Kansas okay. and like staying at people's houses. And nice. it was the single most fun thing I've ever done in comedy. Okay. Like we were just smoking weed, driving through Kansas, which was probably dangerous. As far, I mean, oh, first of all, illegal. yeah, first of all, right. traffic accidents, but also it was pretty, pretty fucking illegal. Just laughing so hard and doing these shows where, you know, some of our stuff worked, some of it didn't. Mitch would always do well, but it was just, it was just really, and we were all pretty new. Well, Mitch wasn't new, but um, Cody, Weston, and I were pretty new. It was the first time we had any, done anything like that, and it was just a good group of people, and like a lot of fun shit happened. Like, we went to a casino and stuff. Nice. And that was really fun. Cool. And I wish I could do more stuff like that. Like, I know that there's, there's groups of comedians who will do that, like, yeah. go book, like, a bunch of stuff, and then that has to be a fucking ball. I mean, yeah. you might not be making that much money and or you might be scrounging. Yeah, you might be making negative money, but <laughs> you're, you're probably getting better and you're definitely having fun. Yeah, there's definitely, like, one of the fun things, just going to Boulder, like, Boulder is in Denver. There's a different yeah. crowd here and so it's not as extreme as going to a different state, but this definitely is an exercise in seeing if your jokes travel well. 
like if you, I don't know, maybe to have a huge chunk about scooters, yeah. and maybe they don't have scooters in Boulder, like yeah. they're not going to know about it. And that, and definitely in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, they don't have scooters. So that like teaches you something about your material. Ultimately, you want material that's going to work everywhere. Probably. Or find a niche and just make that your thing. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people get popular or successful because they serve a certain group and they serve very well. Like Russell Peters gets, I don't know what his ethnicity is. Is he Indian? I think. He serves that cult, that culture, that group very well. And so he packs out arenas because he's the Indian comic. Larry the Cable Guy is like the, the blue collar comic. Uh, who else? Fluffy, Fluffy. Uh, I don't know who that is. Yeah, oh Gabriel Iglesias. Okay. He's kind of, he's more everybody, but he definitely serves a lot of uh, an Hispanic uh, angle. So, okay. I think, I think if you want, if, like, that's a good thing to do is like to find your niche and like really drive home that this is what I do. Right. This is my perspective. This is the people that I'm trying to serve. Yeah. Because like being everything to all people, you're definitely gonna fail sometimes. Unless you're, I mean, unless you're really good at it. Unless that's just who you are. Like Jim Gaffigan, Brian Regan. Yeah. Those people are fun, as funny as anybody. And they're crushing it. Yeah. And they've been doing it good. And they could go anywhere. Yeah. So it is, it's just harder to strive for. So I contradicted myself. Meh. <laughs> Sentence. Yeah. You came around. Yeah. It's all about learning. You're learning. Yeah. Well, that's what the thing is. I don't think if you ever put like some definition or some rule behind comedy, then y'all will figure out a bunch of ways how that's not true. Right. It's like, oh, well, you have to do this. Well, like, okay, here's a bunch of people who are very funny who don't do that. Right. Because it's so individualized. It could be really anything. So that's why I kind of like hate Yeah, every room is different, too. Yeah. I'm not at a point yet where I can do this, but I, I look forward to someday having enough material where I can be like, huh, they didn't really like that. Uh, you know, maybe because it was too dark or it was too athletic or too political or whatever. I, let me try some other material. Yeah. And then you find out what the audience likes and then you just like keep drilling into that area. Yeah. That seems to be like a superpower or skill that I'm certainly not <laughs> aware of yet. I'm, I'm at least at the point that we talked about earlier. I'm now aware when I'm not doing well. Yeah. Like, like I, uh, I tried to tell a, a trail running joke that does very well in Denver in the Midwest. And people were just like, what? What's Midwest trail running? What's yeah. Your... <laughs> Where in the Midwest? Uh, I did it in Iowa, and it did not do well. It's not a lot of runners? Uh, I guess not. I guess it is just the very uh, Colorado culture kind of thing. Like, trail yeah. running. Yeah, and I'm even making fun of trail running, but they just like weren't interested in it. And it also... Part of, part of the premise is that it's very beautiful to go trail running. Yeah. And maybe these places just aren't beautiful. Maybe yeah. they can't envision yeah. like running with like eagles flying overhead. Yeah. Amazing beauty around. We're very lucky to be in Colorado. Did you grow up in? You grew up in Pueblo, right? Yeah. Cool. So Pueblo, I mean, uh, Colorado-ish. Yeah. But it's in the it's in the prairie plains of Colorado. Like we didn't. I've never been skiing. Okay. I never did like Colorado shit because we were just. In the prairies, like we had, you know, go drive a truck in the prairies. That was <laughs> that was our Colorado. Right. Okay. So one of the things we do on this, uh, whatever this is, is I'll challenge you to do something at the open mic, and you can challenge me to try and have like some kind of goal going in, uh -huh. and then after the mic, we'll talk about it and see how we do. Uh huh. I I have a specific something I want to work on tonight. I'll talk about it in a minute. But while you're thinking of a challenge for me, I will, I should have thought of this earlier, but I didn't. I'm coming up with a challenge for you right now. Do you have anything you'd like to be challenged to do? Anything in particular you wanted to work on? No, uh, not anymore. How about... Can I tell you, tell you yours? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Make fun of something in the room. Make fun of something in the room. I love yeah. it. Okay, be present. Yeah, like start your set off with something that's about the room we're in. Yep. Okay. That's, that's a good, good way to start like a thing like oh how stupid is this thing right yeah I love it uh, for you also might be bad if it's too premeditated <laughs> like doing something like that right with someone who's like okay I gotta go up and make fun of something that sure. could actually be like yeah especially the worst is you come up with something and then the comic before you uses it <laughs> so 
So I don't say you have to start your set. It just has to exist somewhere okay. yeah, in the okay, set, or you do something. Can it be a person in the room? Yeah. Okay. You talk about the cool. space. You address yeah. something in the room. Sure. I that wasn't that. that you I, couldn't have addressed. Myself, I find that very funny when I see comedy now because I'm so used to like the the memorized bits. Yeah. That, like when Sam Talent just does something that you know is unique and original yeah. to that time and space. Yeah, Big Trey really Ogerson's one of my favorite comics, and he's um, known for his crowd work. So there's a lot of crowd work in the show, and it's just and he does he did a crowd work show on CISO that I just loved, and I did a crowd work show myself. And I just I love when, I think the best stuff comes from that huh. when people can tell because people can tell that it's coming from you at that moment. How much time did you do? At the, at the crowd work show. Uh, I think everyone did like seven. Wow. Five or seven. That's um, hard. It's and I hadn't like I, think. I really hadn't when I when I hosted I hadn't really like mentally prepared myself. So the guy was like, "Hey, give it up for your host Patrick Scott." I was like, "Oh shit, I have to go do this right now." <laughs> and I felt so bad because there's just a couple in front, and so I had to start asking them questions. And then I had to get something going, so I ended up asking asking them weird sex questions, and it worked out. But I was like, "Ah, fuck, I had to go so low so quick." But yeah. I, I hadn't really mentally prepared myself. And there's just kind of like, there's just a few like little tricks you can kind of figure out and do uh, to kind of get stuff going when you're doing crowd work. But yeah, uh, yeah. so That's I really incredible. like stuff like that when you can tell someone's being funny in the moment. Right. And I think I can take like a, like a D level joke and make it a C and I can okay. make like an A joke, an A plus if people can know and feel that you came up with it in the moment. Yeah. So it's a good thing to practice or just like, be open to like yeah. taking a step off base of the, off your premise and go like oh what the fuck just happened yeah okay how about this for you uh, I want you to make eye contact with at least one audience member and notice when you make them laugh okay 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 do you normally look at the audience <laughs> nah, or do you like a look over the audience no I've had a different stages like I at one point I was good with it right now I'm just like very insecure and unconfident so I can't I, can't, I have trouble that's a with perfect them. challenge yeah I have trouble that's with good. eye contact right, we'll focus on that okay no, that's good okay can't be me <laughs> hey man if there's nobody else there yeah, if there's nobody else there sure I will I mean, sit in a front row so you can <laughs> I, I think this should be a good mic I have no idea I've heard from a couple people that it's a good mic Saturday night well Saturday evening yeah, I mean, we don't have any Saturday mics in Denver anymore. So. Isn't somebody posted something? Oh, is there a new one? Yeah, there might know, be a new one. Facebook. Or yeah, I try and do it less now. Like, I only really put up jokes and then watch the notifications I get, and I try never to scroll through Facebook because it just makes me happier. Okay. Uh, but I remember seeing something that there was going to be a Saturday one in Denver soon. Cool. Yeah, which would be nice. Yeah. I mean, like, nickel. Nickel Yeah, I was yeah, just thinking that. So. Was though, like, that was not a, that great. That was a tough one, but being the only one on a certain night yeah. gave it a lot of cred. Yeah. Like if I happened to be free on a Saturday night, I was excited about it, regardless of whether it was a good mic. Yeah, you might as and, well. and sometimes towards the end, it, it got a little weak with the audience, but there was always an audience there. The problem was they didn't want to be there. It was like <laughs> ambush comedy. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's the worst. Where it's like, oh yeah, you should hate me. I'm ruining your dinner. Right. Good old Boulder. Here we are. Have you done comedy all over Colorado? Have you gone back to Pueblo and done comedy? Yeah. That's definitely something I've done a lot all over. And then we did like the comedy festival in Trinidad. Oh, cool. And I used to live in Greeley, so I used to do Fort Collins and Longmont and Greeley stuff all the time. Nice. And uh, but yeah, I'd come to shows Boulder all the time. Um, Mostly shows, bro. A little bit of both. Like, I've done shows in Mike's and Greeley. There's um, a church from that movie. Do you remember what movie that was? Jack uh, Nicholas? Nicholson? The Shiny? No. Uh, I'm not aware of it then. It was more modern. It was uh, Anger Management? I'm not sure. <laughs> Those are my two. People can see it. Those are my two. Uh, so, yeah. So, all over Colorado. Definitely. And then when I do... I didn't do this as much when I was trying to get, like work on a set like okay new face is coming up I want to try and do this set a lot and like learn about this set a lot but then you don't want to do it in front of the same comedians I would end up driving to Colorado Springs and Fort Collins and Longmont a lot just so I could try it out around comics who weren't the ones that I had done it in front of already 
So I, I do that. Yeah, I love that about getting a little bit farther away from Denver. Yeah, just for the sake of like like tonight. Like even if even if the audience is ten other open mic comedians, it's very likely, other than Sherrod, that none of them have seen me before. Yeah, which is so nice. that would be kind of especially cool. if you're like yeah when I was trying to run stuff over and over again. Yeah, it was good to like not have to. Feel, you just feel gross when he's like, yeah, you guys have heard this. Yeah, and it, it kind of, for me, it wrecks my confidence. Like, I, I yeah, will do a bit, <laughs> and it will do great in front of a good audience, and I do the same bit in front of 15 jaded open mic comedians who have probably heard a version of it. Mm -hmm. You know, there was 75% the same, but I've improved it and added tags, and they they tune out within the first 10 seconds. Yeah. Like, oh, this is his bit about XYZ. Yeah. Uh, don't need to listen to that again. And I'm, I'm guilty of that, too. Oh, I have trouble. I mean, I used to be, I used to always sit in the front and listen to everybody just because mm -hmm. I wanted to do that. But now I can't possibly do that and still d keep doing this. Right. Because that would just, that's a, that's a, it's punishment at some point. Yeah. Like, I was being considerate for so long. Like, like several years. I think maybe the first four years. I'd always listen to everybody, sit in the front, I, you know. And I had to do it less and less because... You're a good man. It was destroying me because right. it's like oh okay I yeah. and I wasn't being a good audience member um, and now it's nice with the baby I have an excuse to get the fuck out of there yeah which I I would always stay a little bit because I never wanted to be the guy who just went up and left because I think that's kind of rude yeah but now I don't feel bad about it because I do have somewhere else to be and um, for my own conscience where I'm just like I don't want to feel like a, a selfish asshole where I'm like oh I, this is my thing I want to do I have to leave you and the baby by yourselves uh, I need to get back as soon as possible so I don't feel like a jackass. Right. And so I just, it doesn't bother me now to leave uh, pretty soon after I go up because I have to. You've been sleeping much? How's the... Uh, yeah. Yeah? He's, he's, he's actually... I'm trying to write a bit about it, but he's he's a pretty good baby. Nice. And I... The idea is with the bit is that I have to lie to other parents about how bad he is because they're having terrible uh. situations <laughs> and they don't like to hear it. Right. Um, and it's true. That's no good. one wants to hear it. And also, I and think, that's relatable too. That, that applies to so many things. Like, I, it's not just babies. Like, yeah. sometimes you have an easier go of something, and you kind of you feel some societal pressure to say, "Oh yeah, yes, I agree. It was very difficult." Yeah. <laughs> or if you just say anything other than what exactly everyone wants you to say, then it's like it shakes me. Right. Especially with like babies and shit. Like, there's 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 stock answers for every question that you're supposed to give, and if you say anything other than that, people might look at you weird. So it's, they never want, like, how's the pregnancy going? They never want to hear, well, she's constipated and uh, blah, blah, blah. You got to, you got to kind of sugarcoat it. Right. Because nobody, nobody wants the actual. No, yeah. yeah. No one wants how it actually It's just is. like when you ask somebody, how's your day going? You don't yeah. really want to know if it's like super, oh, my mom died today. Like, yeah. I, I wasn't really looking to get into that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's been, it's been, I've been trying to figure out how the new way I'm going to have to do it is. Because I have to write more before and go to less mics. And it's been really fucking me up. Because huh. I'll be like... I kind of like that sometimes. I'll have like this idea where I've been... Okay, I've written this like five times. I know where I want to go in this fucking bit. And then I'll go to the mic and I'll be too tied to the path that I've already done. Oh, got it. And I'll be like tripping over words because I'm trying to hit phrases and stuff. And I'm not... I'm getting caught up on repeating what I had written rather than, you know, uh, sure. figuring it out as I go or something. That's a good uh, reminder. So what I want to work on tonight, in addition to calling out something in the room, is uh, modulating my voice and working on making my delivery not sound like I'm rehearsing a script. Yeah. You know? Um, that would maybe just... You know, have the bullet points of your things. Sorry. Like, the bullet points are the mile markers of the bit and not have it all written out. Right. And be and go up there with the intention of finding that connective tish, tissue and that phrasing in the moment because that's how it's going to sound most natural. It's not going to be like, therefore, after this. It's right. going to be like, hey, well, it's going to be in your voice uh, because that, cause you're actually speaking and coming up with it as you go. Yeah. This bit, I don't, it's, it's funny. I... I don't know if I'm bad at comedy, which could very well be. Ooh, I think we're we're just gonna park here. Um, but uh, Ooh, we're on time. like I have a lot 
of jokes in a short period of time. And I feel like when I do that, I need to kind of stick to the script. Like, if, if it's something new that I haven't, like, done a bunch and it's kind of loose, mm -hmm. I'm a little more free to do that, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Anyways, we're here at the mic. It looks like it's right there. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Are you going to edit things? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. We're still on camera. Totally unedited. So, it's a long all right. Time. All right, <laughs> bye. Yeah, here we go. We're back. We got Patrick Scott again. We just went to full cycle. Whatever it's called in Boulder, Colorado. Pretty good mic. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Guest hosted by Ryan. Do you remember his last name? No. Don't know. He was funny. Did a good job. Moved it. Well, kind of moved it along. Not really. Kind of <laughs> let people go. Yeah. I did like seven and a half minutes, I want to say. Yeah, I did nine, I thought. I was like, and when I looked at that, I was like, that's too long. Yeah. I shouldn't have fucking done that. Yeah. Um, I gotta, sorry, I gotta plug in the GPS here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we were there like, it's 8.40 now. The mic started at seven. That's kind of, that's pretty decent. I mean, that was under two hours and we yeah. both got five plus minutes. I think that's a, that's a it's pretty, and there, were, and there were 40 people in the room. Yeah, and I think it would have been way quicker if they would have put time limits on the comics. Yeah, like most I, people stuck to five. Did they? Ish. Yeah, like I that. was. I timed like at least six comics, and I was probably like the tenth one up. Okay, that's uh, not terrible. Which is leaving now. See. Sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. We are ready to roll. We got the lights on. Yes. Is it illegal? Start it. I don't know. Have the lights on. Or comics. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what'd you think? Thought it was okay. Thought it was okay. What what mic in Denver is superior to that mic? Superior to that one? Yeah. Uh, and for what reason? <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, they just weren't, uh... I don't know. I guess they were listening, so it was fine. I, I'll say, it was, it was an awkwardly laid out room for comedy. Yeah. A lot of the people were very far from the stage. So that made it difficult. Like, I could... I had a table at the very back on my left yeah. who was would get into a joke like I did I said like who's got who's athletic and they were like engaging with me yeah. and right after my first punchline they laughed really hard and then went back to conversation yeah it was too easy to, <laughs> to ignore the comics yeah I could see people listening and uh, maybe not like responding like you know like stopping their conversation and listening but not necessarily being fully engaged with everything yeah. and then what I thought I was like okay I think I did a little bit of good work where I could see people in the back of the room starting to pay attention because the people in the front were laughing yeah. I think that's a good metric for rooms like that where the, like there's no like it's so far away like people in the back are just gonna talk just because it's a bar and that's what they should be doing right and um, if you could like get the front of the room to laugh loud enough and long enough they'll be like oh what's going on yeah and i did get a couple people in the back to start paying attention uh so i, I did feel okay about that nice uh but it was yeah i don't know a bunch of new shit that it's not working and it's troubling yeah that's, so i don't like it <laughs> and, that's a bummer. and then i just did a bunch of stuff that i knew kind of worked and then i did one that i like that uh i don't do very often just because i think it's fun mm -hmm. uh so I don't know. I thought, yeah, which was nice. I had enough time to actually do some stuff that would work and then actually try some other stuff that's uh, new. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I yeah. think it was good. I think for now a Saturday there. night mic, your only option, I mean, it, it's almost, it's 45 minutes to an hour drive from Denver, yeah. but for me, that's totally, that was totally worth it. It was productive. And you can't say that sometimes mm -hmm. about like mics. Yeah. <laughs> like you'll go to one where there's nobody there or there, nobody's listening and it's like, okay, well, how, pr how productive was that? Right. Uh, but this is totally productive, which is, is I mean, a hallmark for what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about our challenges uh, as we go over the world's biggest speed bump. Holy moly. Yeah, don't fuck around. Um, okay. Uh, Yours turned out well. Right? Oh, heck yeah, it did. Thanks for the, uh, that was terrific. Well, I think the insight with the, you know, really expensive bikes guarded by the, the <laughs> nylon rope was pretty hilarious. And yeah. Like, Wow, yeah, like what kind of, what, where, what are we, where are we? Yeah, basically what happened was I was comparing this miniature REI and very nice kind of Cause it's a bike shop. gentrified, bougie, boulder bike shop where they had an open mic to all the seedy bars where we have our Denver open mics, Yeah, which are pretty gross from the lion's lair bathroom to the... The only thing I thought about, sometimes you were too 
aggressive with them and putting them down. I'm like, you okay. don't necessarily need to do that. Yeah. Like you liberal elites or something like that you <laughs> call them. I was like, Jesus, fuck. Elitists. Elitists. Yeah. Like, what? such a funny thing to call somebody. Yeah. You elitists. Because huh. I think that's a good... Uh, I remember I, some guy was talking, like, just at a bar, like one of these shows, and I told him to shut the fuck up. And some guy was like, you should need to treat crowd work like they're a part of the show and you're bringing them into it yeah like it doesn't need to be combative at all like you should the first you should strive to like you know bring them into the show and be happy and kind and yeah that that one is actually a, a bit that i have which yeah. is perfect i have a bit of it basically about boulder being sneaky rich and they they uh, laughed at it which oh, made me go like it. oh it's true yeah because i didn't know if it was true i was oh, like oh yeah. is this true yeah i mean in like ohio people think boulder they still think of mork and mindy oh but really? it it is. It's richer than even I suspected. You can't buy a house out here for less than a million dollars. Yeah. A million. Yeah, dollars. you got some Silicon Valley That's shit. Insane. Bleeding over here. Yeah. So it it's is. a beautiful spot, though. Well, I understand I know. that. It is, it is gorgeous. Like I would love to live here. Uh, I mean, so, I, I need my I got like rifles. A, I got like a three clap applause break. Which yeah. this is my new favorite trick at open mics. If you, if you get some clapping. I just call out the applause break. Oh, really? I'm going to take that applause break right there. <laughs> that gets all the comedians to snap their heads up. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> Is somebody actually getting laughs? Uh, yeah, so thank you for that suggestion. It was fun. Like, during the, the hour and a half... They sensed it, too. There's too many people going up and just doing material yeah. straight to these people. And so, they, if they even... They loved even the sense of spontaneity. Yeah. And that I don't think that's a... I think that was true for this audience. I don't think I think that's true for most audiences yes. that they could sense the spontaneity. Yeah. And you really nailed some funny shit too. Yeah. Uh, which also helps. And yeah. so, and the thing where I think like the bike behind the nylon rope, I think that's like an a funny thing to say. But since it was right in the there. moment, yeah. And they could tell you're coming up with it. It's an a it gets on a plus reaction. Right. So that, I mean. Yeah, and it was fun for me. Like the hour and yeah. a half, which was a little mind numbing. Yeah. Watching the open mic comics, there were some good ones in there. Yeah. But uh, you know, I was just coming up with ideas. And right before I went up on stage, I went to the bathroom and came up with a door <laughs> lock thing, which is. Yeah, and that was that was good too. Or you're just throwing everything out there. Like you had yeah. several. I wasn't just like you. Like okay, I, I pick my one thing and then I, I stopped thinking. Yeah, it was you great. Were, Thank you, you for the trying? idea. Thank you for the premise. Yeah, it was. A... It's a fun exercise, and also if you're at like a shitty mic or a shitty show, that's a good way to begin because it's it's gonna get people interested. Yeah, and it's and it's more fun too. Like if you just went, okay, now I'm going to recite my jokes. Yeah, it's less I, fun. When I go to like I've been to New York and Los Angeles to watch comedy, and yeah. definitely in New York City, it's very common. Like with the very polished comedians, you almost lose track of the transition from the in the moment crowd yeah. worky room description stuff and into the bits like they're very good at like I I, did, I was able to get away with that today because my crowd worky in the room thing was basically Denver's poor Boulder's rich yeah. and I have a bit about Boulder being rich so you couldn't really tell when I left the room stuff and was just doing something that I've done yeah 30 times before and that comes with I mean like so the way that someone could just transition into a bit from crowd work is just having a lot of material a material and have it like a tool like and think of it more of just like a tool belt that you're using all the time so you go up there and your goal isn't to do material it's to be funny and then you have these tools which are your bits yeah. to deploy at any time but your, your job is to go up there and be funny and yeah. I've always that's what helped me a little bit to think of it that way is I'm not up here to recite material I'm up here to be funny and what I do is if, if uh, once I stop think of something funny or like uh, or I just pull out the material as it comes so sometimes you'll riff on something and you're like oh shit this is exactly like that bit I have and it slides right back into that bit and then a lot of bits are a part of giant chunks in my head too so right. then that leads into a giant chunk and then it just goes from there. So you just really have to have, like, know your bits really well. Yeah, I don't have bits in the chunks yet. I have lots of bits, and they're disparate. Uh, but it is, it's cool, too, when, like, it's, actually, it's not always cool, because sometimes it's negative things. But, like, the news cycle, sometimes something will come up in the news, and I'm like, oh, I have a bit about that, and I can just lead into it that day, because yeah. it feels topical. Yeah. Um, that definitely inspires me to write more, 
and I keep think generating more bits. That should be where like co comedy goes. Like so, there's that guy Andrew Schultz who. Did, oh, I love him. I talk about him all the time. Yeah, He's the best. Did the hour special, then released it in little clips. Yeah. And people consume things more in little clips than they do an hour special. That's why yeah. Netflix started doing 15 minute things and half hour things because most people would drop yes. off, drop off. That so reminds me. That's an old way of doing it. That's Sorry right. for the interruption. No, that's Eric. okay. Uh, Everybody, I forgot to mention it in the first half, Jesus. but here's my book, Not Good Yet. Here, you can hold it. Drive it. You're driving. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's got a whole chunk on Andrew Schultz in there, who I saw in New York City. Oh, yeah? And was so impressed with. Um, so you can get that anywhere, whatever. There we go. <laughs> you might be in one of those pictures. You might be in the book, actually. I can look it up say. later. Can, do you um, have like just a free? Can I have this? Do uh, I have to pay? Can I pay you for we, this? We can talk about it. Okay. We'll okay. work it out. Okay. You can go read it if you're a Denver comedian and you really want one. Send me a note or uh, <laughs> or really a comic anywhere. Yeah. But also if you're in Denver, you can go to Mutiny and they have them there. I've had a lot of comedians say, yeah, I really thumbed through your book. And, uh, and so yeah, he does the thing where he but but one of Chappelle's specials on Netflix. One was a big, highly produced thing, and one was the thing that he had filmed like two weeks before with low production values and one was more topical. Yeah, I liked the, the, the follow-up thing, and the punchline. Yeah, yeah, and they were, I just think there's like room for comedians to be super topical on social media and get a lot of attention that way. Yeah. And I don't know people, like even Andrew Schultz is filming a special then putting out in, in uh, little pieces where like I think someone could get famous. For free, he's putting it out, yeah. which is interesting. As someone could get famous doing something super topical and then putting it out on the internet and it getting, instead of a special getting viral, or a part of a special getting viral, a bit, a, a new bit, a very, yeah. like, a certain shelf life bit. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, Bert Kreischer? Yeah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. He's yeah. got that viral bit, The Machine. Yeah. It's like that 13 minute story. Yeah. Apparently it just got optioned to be a feature film. So it's going to be a movie. Uh, well, so. hopefully, but that's interesting. Like, I wonder, like, because he already did, he There's was, yeah. he was, uh, he was, uh, they wrote an article about him in Rolling Stone when he was younger, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that turned into Van Wilder. Yes. And so it'd be oh, interesting, a, a similar, yeah. a similar path for that story. Yeah. But it's, it's worthy of that. That'd be interesting. I'd watch it. Yeah, that's really, actually, I just watched that this week for the first time, if you Van aware. Wilder? No, no, I love Van Wilder. Uh, The Machine. Oh. Uh, so if you're into, like, I have a couple of bits now where I tell stories, yeah. and it's, like, one of the best examples of modern comedy and telling a story and just keeping it punchy, and you watch that, it's yeah. like a master's class in how to tell that, a story. I think that guy's underrated. I think a lot of people hate him because he's, or he's don't like him. He's douchey. His persona he's is. He's a dude guy. He yeah. doesn't wear a shirt, but he has really funny jokes. I yeah. think they're very funny. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very open-minded when it comes to comedy. Like, I'm like, Larry the Cable Guy's got funny jokes. He yeah. might have bought them from somebody, but they're still really funny. Yeah. But I think people are like, oh, this he's this archetype, and he appeals to this certain group, so I'm going to put him in this box and not like him. But yeah. I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to that, that stuff. All right, let's talk about your challenge. What was it? Uh, eye contact. Eye contact. Did you remember? I hardly remember. <laughs> okay. But I did look several people in the eye. That oh, mom that mom in the front row was staring at me. Okay. Yeah, it she was a good audience member. It was like, Jesus, she's watching. Yeah. Um, I think it was her first month. And I did key in on certain people that were having a good time and I did look at them all the time. Nice. But I didn't necessarily make strong eye contact. I, you know what was funny about that mic? I had a hard time hearing myself. Yeah, I yelled like my I, voice is I, cracking because yeah, I, I yelled. There, there wasn't a like a monitor mic yeah. or, or speaker, and the speaker that we had was in front of us yeah. and going into a very large room, so I couldn't tell if I was being loud or not. Yeah, that you, was a little probably needed to be louder. Like it's, that's a good like advice for people doing like bad bar shows is sometimes just being louder will help. Yeah. Because it's just you're trying to drown out the sound of everything else, yeah. and don't be obnoxious with it. But like right. being, you, it's definitely not going to. Well, help there's you like a being double edged sword there because if you get if you're too aggressive with a microphone, especially with less expensive PA systems, yeah. it like it's it jarring. Yeah. yeah, it distorts. That's the right word. It distorts. Yeah, you gotta be aware of that shit. It's hard. I never know. But it, when you can't really hear yourself, it's hard to know. That's the worst when you can't hear yourself. You're like, is this thing even fucking on? Yeah. Am I? Is it? And then people aren't, you know, 
not to put myself down, but some of my jokes, just people weren't responding. And yeah. I'm like, well, did that joke suck or can people not hear me? Probably the joke just 50/50. wasn't good. I think because they can't hear you as well, they only the really, really good stuff's going to work. Yeah. You know? I like that room, man. They were great. I had a couple times where I had half of them laughing, and it was fun. If I lived in Boulder, I'd go all the time. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's like, okay, so I, I was going to I get to just out of uh, courtesy to my wife, I'm only going to do one mic this weekend. Okay. Um, and I think that this, I probably got more out of this than I would have if I would have went to Tandem. Uh, bar, so that's I'm happy about that. Yeah, good, cool. Well, that's what this is all about. Except for my new shit's not working, and yeah. I think it's got. Do you want to talk? Are you comfortable talking about it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, uh, babies are easily kill themselves. I, you're, uh, you're. I'm a great dad. Yeah. Because I can. That is a killer. Like the diaper one, changing thing. Two line. No, 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 no. The hearing. I can hear. Was that new? I can hear. You can hear your baby from here. Uh, or something. I don't know. No, that's literally, right that's literally what I thought when I got off. I was like, well, at least I got that tag. Yeah, that was good. It's just like, it was great. It was it's hilarious. Cra- it's crazy. You it was extra it. hilarious because I know that you live in Denver. Yeah. I don't know that everybody there knew that, but that's so. That's such an open mic thing. It's like, okay, well, I wrote two pages of shit, but I did get a, that tag worked in it. The so, one thing that you might have made up on the spot. I did <laughs> because I felt that. It's like, oh. It is because you, and that's a good like example of like okay, having the self awareness of saying so the, the opening line like I'm trying to say something that's going to get a rise out of people. So the opening line is, "Hey, I'm a new dad," and everyone goes, "Yeah, yeah." But I, in my mind, I went like, I, I say he's a month old. I'm like, man, that makes me sound like a shitty dad. Like my 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 baby's a month old and uh, I'm here. So and then I referenced that and then it made people laugh because it's true. And so that that was that was an example of like reacting to my being self-aware in the moment going yeah well, yeah it sounds like not i have a month-year-old baby i shouldn't fucking be here uh so that's how that worked out yeah but it, i think that will work as a tag 